We left here in a converted school bus. We got to camp meeting that night or that morning. We left here and went to the Tampa, to Waimama, to the Church of God camp meeting. And we pulled in about 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, they had a few of the campers that was there and everything else. Well, before we left, we forgot to drain the air tank for the air brakes. And when you don't do that, besides the hearing from the air, you're going to hear, <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, we're looking for a number on a post that you can't only see in the daytime. Finally, a Somebody, whatever county that is, from the sheriff's department pulled up and he says, what are you doing? We're looking for this number. He says, forget the number. There's plenty of places. Just stop and look for it tomorrow morning. He says, stop this bus tonight. So we was able to do that. Now, we were up all day in about half the night. And I'm going to tell on him here a little bit. <laughs> and uh, while we were supposed to sing at the 11 o'clock service at camp meeting there's about oh I don't know what 5,000 people there something like that daytime speaker and uh, we were the last group to sing before the speaker speak and the rest of the band didn't want to be with us they went out and sat in the audience but Rick and I was already on stage, so we really didn't have an opportunity to uh, get off the stage in time. We didn't want to be rude, so they got this round wall, and they, we set two chairs, three or four chairs along there, so we sat down in the chairs. And while we were there, the man gets up to speak. Come here, George. And while we were there and the man was speaking, here in front of 5,000 5, people, I'm sitting in a chair, and this happens to me. Rick laid his head on my shoulder. I said, no, we don't do that in front of 5,000 people. I can see why. But we toured. From that day, we left out of there. We went straight to... Michigan. We were on a five-week tour. We had one day off for five weeks. Or we could write a book about that trip. <laughs> we broke down in Cartersville, Georgia on the way back and Rick, Rick was asleep and the driver came back here and he says, we just put the fan through the radiator. He said, what do you think we're going to do? I said, well, it's 4 o'clock in the morning and it's raining. I'm going to go back in my bunk and I'm going to go to sleep. Because we can't do nothing about it until the morning anyway. So here we are morning. They send a wrecker out to get us from Cartersville, Georgia. And they sent one of the big wreckers out. And it was kind of misty rain. So here we are in a bus. You can't ride in the bus. So we're all riding in the back of this wrecker, hanging on to the boom while it's raining, and we're towing the bus in to get it work on. <laughs> we had all kinds of fun on that trip. Uh, we, we, like, I don't remember. We, we, Legitimately. Yeah. We, uh, we had a good time on that trip. Too. And Lord, you know, they say that the Lord keeps his eyes out. The Lord keeps his eyes out on, on drunks and fools. Now, we wasn't drunk, so we must have been the other. <laughs> but I praise the Lord for my brother. I've seen, I've sang with him many times, appeared with him many times. All through the years, we've been together off and on. And it does my heart great pleasure to introduce to you Rick Spooner. Amen. Yeah. Let him bless you. I've been saved for 50 years. I was 
called to the ministry three years before I was born. And I'm serious. Uh, my dad was a minister, and um, he prophesied my birth three years before I was born at a time when they were told they could not have any children. And uh, I came along with it like, just like Dad said I would. And so I've known since I was old enough to, to understand language, I've known I was called to the ministry. I got filled with the Holy Ghost 43 years ago. I cannot remember a time in my life when I wasn't serving the Lord. My only dream in life was to be a minister. You know, I was so... I was certain from the time I was old enough to walk that I was going to, was going to be a missionary. I didn't know what missionary was, but I was going to be one. <laughs> and sometimes God has other plans. Or, I don't know, he still may push me out in that direction. I don't know. My girlfriend's in Malaysia. But uh, I don't know what God's going to do. But sometimes, this some song I want to share with you is basically my testimony. It's the first song God gave me in 1982. Um, but... Uh, Sometimes God's plans are different than ours. We, uh, this like, the stand holding up my keyboard is not a keyboard stand, it's a walker. Sometimes we get put into things we don't think we're equipped for. But God has a plan. God will not, God's, God's will will not lead you where God's grace can't keep you. But uh, this is, this song is my testimony. going to, you turn me around, showing me, sorry, what?
still be crawling, Lord, for without trials, I would be weak. So I'm singing a song of thanks unto my Lord, a song of praise and laughter to my King. If it wasn't for those things in life which have brought me to my knees, I'd still be crawling, Lord, for without trials, I would be weak.